Love this podcast? Support it and sponsor today. Simply head to OzCastNetwork.com for details. So we want to use our Mondays here on the Brecky Show to start a little bit of a rumble, start a bit of a debate. I mean, it's a good way to start the week, get Ooh. everyone geared up and Skrillex energized. Style. That's yeah. it. But uh, last week we gave it a go and we did Ritz versus Jats. Obviously, yeah. the two heavy hitter biscuits. Mm-hmm. And people got very passionate about that. I mean, we are all Jats fans here in the studio. Absolutely. It's funny because this week, the topic we've picked, we're also all on the same <laughs> side again. We're, we're all on the same <laughs> side. So it's really the people versus the Brecky show if uh, if you have a differing opinion. But of course, to Fresh Fan, we do want you to get involved in this because this one does spark a little bit of debate sometimes. We want to know if you are an iPhone or an Android user, which one do you like better? Yeah, I mean, we're all iPhone users in here, and it's the superior phone. Well, I mean, 50% of the world, or 55% of the world uses uh, iPhones. Yeah, so so it's 55% Apple, 27% Android. So (laughs) it does outweigh the Androids immediately. We're going to open up the text line right now. 0428 927 927 is the number to get involved in your iPhone or Android. Mm. See, I know a bloke who uses an Android, and he's he's a professional, but he uses his daggy Samsung, and I can't take him seriously. His posts look horrendous. <laughs> so what, there's something... what is he a professional in, being a loser? <laughs> <laughs> So, um, yeah, so with the camera, I had a look into it. If you want to know a bit of the specs, apparently iPhone, they are, have more natural colours and things like that. Samsung sometimes is a bit more experimental and different cool features on the camera, but it looks a bit more processed and weird. So if you see weird pictures that are too colourful, too bright, it's probably from a Samsung or Android. Look, I mean, I am a strong advocate for the iPhone for Apple uh, here, but I did stumble across a video somewhat recently and I tell you what, I think Android might have the upper hand on us in on terms of uh, the alarms. This is the Android alarm. Pretty fun, pretty nice, easy to wake up to. And then, of course, you have the Apple one. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> you know what, that's, given a, that's given some people PTSD <laughs> this morning. You know what, though? I disagree because when I when I have an alarm, I want it to wake me up. I don't want to gently go back to sleep, and that's what's going to happen with the Android there. It's a bit too calm. You know, mm. you want something jarring. You want something <laughs> pulsating in your head that makes you want to get up. Yeah, right. Okay, well, I, I used to have uh, Android uh, back in the day, and... It was honestly probably one of the worst phones I had. I preferred my Nokia. It yeah, was, okay. It was slow, it lagged a lot, froze. Yeah, iPhone or Android? Yeah, I mean, I think if you are an Android, a passionate Android user, get in, in, get in touch because Tom is in a fighting mood this morning <laughs> I mean, and I can tell he's going to go head to head and try and prove you wrong. I mean, if you are an Android lover, this is your chance. I mean, we know that Android lovers are loyal to the brand, aren't they? They, they certainly love are. a good fight against an iPhone user. So please, text in, have a crack. We have just got a text come through now. Um, somebody said, Android Oppo will never, ever go back to iPhone or Apple. Mm, okay. Interesting. We'd love to know why. Yeah, might have to give them a call back. Looking at the text line here, uh, it's it's a it's a fairly even split, surprisingly, mm. but all the people who are Android or Samsung users, are uh, they're throwing in a little jab at the iPhone oh, users. Oh, absolutely. Where the iPhone user is just like, yeah, I use an iPhone. Yeah, it's just like, <laughs> iPhone's sitting back casual. It's uh, it's not a whole thing. Someone did text in uh, already with the specs saying, hi, Samsung all the way. The camera quality on them is next level. See, that's the thing. Everyone says the camera quality is meant to be better, but I swear every time I see an Android photo, I <sighs> think that looks rotten. Yeah, they look crap. It looks yeah, terrible. Yeah. Well, we- hey, let's let's open up the phone lines. one three hundred seven three seven three seven four. 73 Give us a buzz now. We have a couple people on the line. Surprisingly, no one from Samsung. I don't know. Maybe their phone can't dial it. Maybe. <laughs> I mean, we did get a text in from someone saying, using an iPhone is like licking your elbow. <laughs> I, wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't even use that analogy. Like, it just seems like so stupid. <laughs> hey, obviously a fine phone. We're going to go over to Seton Gardens. we got Byron on the line. Byron, good morning to you, mate. Are you iPhone or Android? Uh, I'm an uh, iPhone. Yeah, okay. good stuff. Good stuff. Have you ever used a Samsung or anything like that? Yeah, I used to have one, but it was very, you know, laggy and late delay when I yeah. click stuff and whatnot. Too confusing mm. to use. So is that the is that the main gripe with Samsung that after a while it just does get a, a bit laggy? Because I did read that that it uh, its longevity sort of goes away after a bit. iPhones last longer. Yeah, it, 
it only lasted about maybe a couple months before it started like lagging. Wow, and being hard to that use, sucks. But... Mm. And how long have you been using iPhones for then? Um, I've had my one for about over a year now, and there's nothing gone wrong with it, not laggy or anything. Yeah, you know, good as the day you bought it. Yeah. Good on you, Byron. Thanks for getting involved, mate. That's all good. Have a good one. Yeah, Thanks, too. Byron. Byron's still waking up, poor guy. Hey, we're going to go to Lisa and Elizabeth Downs. Lisa, good morning. Are you iPhone or Apple? Morning. I, I mean, oh, iPhone 100%. Oh, yeah. 100%. Tell us why. <laughs> um, well, I've just always had an iPhone, and I've been using it for about about my work phone, and it's just so pop. Yeah. Like, <laughs> getting a green text. Like, yeah. Oh, the green text. <laughs> the green text. Yeah, and the emojis. Yeah. Yuck. Yeah, Lisa. Their, their emojis are more cartoony, aren't they? Yeah, and it's just like, whenever I'm, like, using my work phone and, like, I'm using the emojis, I'm like, oh, this doesn't sit right. <laughs> Something bit off about it. I mean, Lisa, yeah. also, I haven't heard the word, someone use the term POV in years. <laughs> Well, I just thought I'd bring it up for this special occasion. Thank just you so much. Show you how it is. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much for getting involved, Lisa. We appreciate it. Thank you. Cheers. Hey, I've just got word from our producer. There is a poll up on our Instagram at the moment as well. Fresh 92.7. You can go vote there. But it's also a 50-50 split on our Instagram wow. poll right now. We'll have to mm. check back on that later at the end of the show. But, hey, we're going to go to Josh now. Josh. Good morning. Are you an iPhone or Samsung? I'm a Samsung person. Mm, okay. okay. The first Samsunger. So tell us why. We don't know much about the Samsung. We're against it, but can you tell us the facts? Well, um, it's it's because it's got a bit of the updates and uh, apps are all organized. And um, there are some certain apps that you can get on Android. Oh, that you can't get on the iPhone. Yeah. Yeah, Exclusive. right. Okay, can you can you tell us about the camera? So, what's the go with the camera? Do you believe that the Samsung camera is better? Well, the camera has um good quality. I think uh I wouldn't argue with um the iPhone because it's also good too. Okay, yeah, okay. So, right. have you ever had an iPhone, Josh? Uh no. Oh, okay. okay. Right, Samsung right. for life. Hey, thanks for getting involved, Josh. We appreciate it. Anytime, I appreciate Cheers. it. Cheers, thanks, Josh. Hey, we got Cody in Port Nalunga on the line. Cody, mate, good morning. iPhone or Samsung? Morning. Um, got Samsung, but it's split at home though. <laughs> Is what? Sorry. So at home, my mum's partner and sister are iPhone. Mum and I are Samsung. Oh, okay, so it's a bit of a war in the house. A bit of a, a bit of a tech yeah. war. Yeah, but I've still got my old iPod for ten years over. Oh, so you're a loyal Apple uh, user then? Not, not really, because I only use it for alarms in the morning. Oh. Use the iPod for the alarm? Why, why do you use the iPod over your Samsung? Well, just the alarm's louder on the docking station, and ah. I don't even use that anymore. Mm, yeah. Hey, interesting. S- still in favour of the iPod. He's sort of split in the middle, this one, like, to be fair. He's yeah. using both. Yeah. yeah, geez, Cody, you're a rare breed. You're like a unicorn in the wild. <laughs> yeah, but... I prefer what I've got now than iPhones. Yeah. Hey, thanks. Thanks so much for getting involved this morning, Cody. Appreciate it. (laughs) Cheers, mate. Hey, finally, we got Brandon from Finden. Brandon, are you iPhone or Samsung, mate? Good morning, guys and gals. Good morning. Uh, Android. 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 You're going to finish off us on on an Android node. Why, Why do you like it better? Well, after using both, I've just found that Using an using an apple is a bit like licking your elbow. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, it's yeah. a bit of a strain. Well, well, you can sort of almost do it, but well, you look pretty foolish trying. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good gear. Oh, I'm not mad about that one. Good one. <laughs> you know what? I got to pay. It. Yeah, we'll pay that one. Good on you, Brandon. Thanks for getting involved, mate. Yeah, cheers, guys. Cheers. I'm not going to lie. I mean, all these Samsung users, I'm still, I'm not convinced. There wasn't many facts all, behind it. I'm not going to say there was heaps of facts for the iPhone either, but. They all seem to have a bit of an air about them that I'm not sure. Bit shaky. Hey, we did just get a text in. We're going to finish up on this. Uh, I married a Samsung user. It's his only ick. <laughs> <laughs> You're listening to Davo, Tom and Callum, the podcast. 
So yesterday in Adelaide, it was the Bay to Birdwood, of course, where all the stunning vintage cars stroll around Adelaide, and it's obviously a real spectacle. Yes. Uh, you know, did you see any of them yesterday? Uh, I did not. Did not. Just lurked at home. What about you, Tom? You're around that area. Yes. No, I uh, I didn't go and watch the Bay to Birdwood. I usually do go check it out. Uh, near my house, they drive right by. So. Yeah. But uh, no, nah, we we were out at Parrotfield Gardens all day. So. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you were doing your Catholic your Catholic Church Day uh, yes. on, on, on yes. Sunday. Holy, Holy Family Spring Fair. Of course. Thank you to everyone who came down. Yeah, beautiful. Well, I was driving out to Norwood in the morning and I noticed on Hackney Road there was a bunch of people setting up near the Botanic Gardens um, to have a suss of all the cars driving past. There was lots of deck chairs out, picnic baskets, yeah. obviously a whole day out, very wholesome. Well, once I'd finished what I was doing in Norwood, I was coming back home and I turned onto Hackney Road and I looked ahead and I saw that I was behind about three of these gorgeous vintage cars. Yeah. And I'm looking at them, I'm going, yeah, okay, this is going to be a disappointing end with me Mazda 3 at the back there <laughs> so, that I've not looked after in years. So is it, uh, is it, is it hard to slip into this uh, this crowd of cars? Like, did, it, did it just seem to happen no, it as just, you were driving? No, it, it was honestly a natural progression. So there was three beautiful vintage cars in front of me and then I looked in my rear view mirror and there was about another three vintage cars behind wow. me. So you're sticking out like a sore you're thumb. You're smack bang in the middle. Smack bang in the middle. Jeez. There I am driving along these most stunning cars you've ever seen. Out of curiosity and by all means if you don't know the answer don't feel like you have to answer it but uh, when was the last time you washed your car? Look um, I couldn't actually give you that answer. <laughs> I would say there's a couple of years in it. Actually, I reckon Whoa. my my friend's husband washed it last, and I reckon right. that was about three and a half years ago. That's like That's just pe- people watching from the side being like, "That's an interesting vintage car with all <laughs> the subway wrappers falling out the boot." It's it's uh it's been raining. It's fine. So anyway, yeah. I'm driving along right, and I'm thinking this is going to be a disappointing. I'm, I've managed to fall into this parade of vintage cars. Me Mazda three hanging on by a thread, driving along, and then I thought, you know what? Boys, I'm going to lean into this. So I started beeping along with them and waving at all the people on the side of the road. Well, giving like a little wave like the Queen. Yeah, she's going absolutely. Past her <laughs> You're going to need a bigger podcast. Dave Tom and Callum, the podcast. On all accounts, the three of us had quite a big weekend. Mm-hmm. And uh, I know we've talked a lot about our weekend already. But I had a uh, I had a bit of a doozy at a mate's thirtieth on Saturday. Uh, my mate Will, uh, good morning to him. I know he's listening. Happy birthday as well for Saturday. Uh, so I went up to the hills. That's where he was. He had it at his uh, dad's place. Nice, uh, nice, nice big courtyard area to sort of do it. You know, th- there was a pizza stand there. Uh, oh, fun! Yeah, nice. everything supplied. It was an awesome thirtieth. A lot of fun. But the only people I knew there were sort of the footy boys because he's a mate from footy. So there was a lot of introductions to be done. A lot of people I didn't know there. Which is interesting because I thought everyone would just know you as Tom from Fresh. <laughs> <laughs> nah, you didn't have the lanyard on. I did, actually, yeah. Just... <laughs> <laughs> I'll put this bad boy on. <laughs> and all the merch on, yeah. yeah. I was like, this way I'll be known. Uh, no, <laughs> so I'm, I'm sort of, you know, slowly meeting everybody one, one by one. And I see a mate from football and I sort of go up and I shake his hand, just say a quick g'day. He's mid-conversation, didn't want to be rude. Uh, and then I, the guy he was talking to, I quickly shook his hand, said g'day, blah, 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 chatting. And in my peripheral, there was someone else there, but it was I, it was someone's girlfriend. I already met him, right? So I mm-hmm. didn't do the, didn't bother with the whole introduction thing. And then I hear next to me, hi, I'm Jesse, by the way. And I look over and she's got her hand out and I'm like, that's not the girlfriend. Oh, no. <laughs> I've made a horrible mistake. So and you've been uh, ignoring her. I ignored, yeah, it wasn't for very long. She maybe, she maybe cut the, <laughs> cut the tension in the air like 45 seconds through. But it was, uh, I would have looked like the rudest person at this party just by completely like blanking her. Yeah, so you've completely blanked her. She's a bit offended. I didn't blank, I, it was an accidental blank. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I mean, but, it yeah. was an accident. I mean, that's kind of how I feel when the fresh fam ring up and they say, g'day boys. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, well, I'm chopped liver. No yeah, dramas. Yeah, yeah. 
I mean, it is such an interesting one. I feel like, yeah, being in big crowds like that uh, just warrants all these problems. Like, um, I've done it before where uh, I've gone up to someone twice. No, oh, And, no. you know, in, in a sort of reverse fashion to what yes. you experience, I've, you know, been amongst this huge crowd of people. You're doing the quick hellos, you know, five seconds of time. Hey, how you going? I'm coming from Fresh. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, uh, but you then, would, though. <laughs> do, you want to, do you want to touch the lanyard? <laughs> but, they say uh, Callum. You're like, oh, from Tom and Callum. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're the one of the three boys, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I've gone around and, you know, introduced myself twice to the one person and said, hey, I'm Callum. And they're like, yeah, we spoke literally five minutes ago. Yeah, and that's I'm like, an jeez, I don't one. even remember that because it was all such quick fire. What do you reckon's worse? Like, fully blanking someone or five minutes later introducing yourself to someone? because you've obviously forgotten them. They're both up there. They're pro- yeah. both pretty bad. <laughs> We're both irrespectable dudes, apparently. Who'd you accidentally offend? Well, recently, as we know, I, uh, I, I congratulated my cousin on his new baby coming and he said, no, my wife's not pregnant. She's oh. just holding a little bit of baby weight still on her tummy and that- I wanted to... I wanted to leave what, immediately. Once again, I really hope your cousin or his wife is not listening this mm-hmm. morning. Yeah, <laughs> arguably, I reckon that's the worst of the three. Yeah, that's that's up there. Yeah. The pregnancy <laughs> thing is what you see in the movies. We're going to head over to Salisbury. We've got Hannah on the line. Hannah, good morning to you. Have you accidentally offended someone? Yeah, even just recently. It was just on the weekend, actually. All right, what happened? Uh, so I had my school reunion, and, you know, we had some... Uh, pre-drinks before the school reunion, as you do. And I'm standing around and I'm saying to these two girls, I'm so glad we've become close now after school. Like, I appreciate you guys so much. And then they've said, wait, weren't we friends at school? And I said, no, "No, I thought I didn't, like, we weren't close. I, You know, we never hung out or anything. They're like, we always hung out. And I was like, oh, I wouldn't tell you secrets. Like, this is a new closeness. And they're like, yes, we would tell you secrets. And then I kind of just had to leave it because there was nothing I could say to make it better. Oh, and, wow. yeah. So, yeah, it was a bit um, mixed match. Yeah, right. do, you, uh, do you remember much of school, Hannah, or was it all a bit of a blur to you? Oh, no. <laughs> I remember things. <laughs> did, you, uh, did you actually hang out a lot, though? or during, who, Who's wrong in the situation? They, I think that I must be really good at being fake. Okay. Yeah. Oh, oh, that sucks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Hannah. Uh, oh. Yeah, so you've just you've <laughs> you've just offended your mates, and then you've come on a radio and said that you're a fake girl. That's not good. Uh, yeah. High school yeah. reunions uh, just seem a bit dreadful, Jesus. don't they? A bit of can of worms to be opened. Yeah, there's too much trauma. Uh, you guys don't want to be friends. <laughs> it's too much trauma. Happy Monday, Hannah. Jeez. Hey, we're gonna go to Tara over in Henley. Tara, have you accidentally offended someone? Um, yeah. So my story's a little bit similar to. Um, and as, um, so I went to high school with this chick and um, basically it's probably been like, yeah, five years down the track. We were like, not close, close, but we definitely knew of each other. We'd had conversations. And then um, we finally enough started working together. Yeah. It was quite a big apartment. Um, and yeah, she's pulled the, oh, like, lovely to meet you. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. She's forgotten you. <laughs> If one happened to me, yeah, I've copped it. Wow, so, like, do you turn around and have you given... I guess you're in... You have two decisions there. Do they stay quiet or did you turn around and say, no, nah, we've already met? Oh, no, absolutely not. No, I took... I, I said nice to meet you too. Oh, <laughs> you're, just, you're, just, you're just lying low until the Christmas photos come oh out from God. years ago. It's like, oh, we actually were at that Christmas party together. So you find out you're already friends on Facebook. You're yeah. like, oh, this is weird. Yeah, well, I'm not going to be the one that doesn't remember someone. <laughs> hey, Tom, we did get a text in and someone just texted in and saying, Tom, did you at least apologise to the girl? Yes, yes, there was an apology and there might have been a small bribe that was uh, <laughs> came with it to try and get the uh, the friendship back you, on track. You can have my piece of birthday cake. Yeah, uh, thanks, <laughs> I, don't, I don't need it. <laughs> You're listening to Dave o, Tom and Callum, the podcast. The idea of the dine and dash has been around for ages and ages, of course, when you go to a restaurant and then mm. you leave without paying. But there's a dude over in Spain that has a little bit of a different method that you have to check out. It's uh, it's quite ballsy. Mm. It's interesting, but it doesn't work. Okay. <laughs> He's not a professional, you know, dine and dasher. It's sort of gone up in his face. And what he's been doing... He's been pretending to have a heart attack. This heart attack. 
for what he does. That's crazy. His scheme, he lives over in Spain. He goes by the name Adidas J. He looks a bit older. He's about, you know, oh, probably... Well, with a name like that, oh, he, looks like a around a Europe. he looks like a tosser, right? And he's about right. like 45 or something. He's a bit of an older bloke. And um, he pretty much goes around these restaurants in Spain. And he's done it about 20 times where he'll sit down, have the meal, and then he'll pretend to have a heart attack and then, you know, be taken away in an ambulance or, you know, uh, sort of brought back to life and then he goes on his own way and doesn't have to pay for the meal. I mean, is he a professional actor or something? Because, I don't know, like, I've been in a play before where you've got to pretend to faint. It's it's impossible yeah. without looking absolutely oh, outrageous. It always looks stupid. Yeah, I mean, like, what do you reckon his tactics were around this as well? Would he leave, like, a couple bits of food left so it looks more realistic or would he wait till the bill comes out and yeah, then right. the plate clean yeah. he, couldn't, he couldn't eat everything right because then it would look really sus I think he'd have to at least leave a little bit or does he get like you know a really expensive bottle like a really expensive steak caviar and when he sees the bill that's when he pretends because it's so high <laughs> so much money like, oh like, god what have I done yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so it's interesting because like it does say that he indulges in the expensive stuff, but he must get a small quantity of the expensive stuff because he does his lobsters and, like, a few whiskies and everything. Right. But literally, like, the last place he tried it at was only 60 Australian dollars. Oh, oh, see, well, he's... <laughs> <laughs> so this is the thing. is It seems like he's gone from trying to save money to now he's just loving the thrill of this. By the sounds of it, yeah, but he, uh, all good things have to come to an end. Yeah, because... I was going to say, how did he get caught? So he's been caught. He, uh, he goes for the heart attack. Drops to the floor at this place where he was only spending sixty bucks, and yeah. no one believes it because they've and, seen him drop. And he's like, he's on the floor, and then apparently they just called the police instead of the ambulance. So he would have probably been laying on the floor, one eye slightly open, seeing the sirens come, and he's like, all right, good, good, everything's on track. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, the cops rock in, handcuff him, and they're like, you're being arrested. Yeah, right. And at that point, he turned around. He's like, look, I know I'm in the wrong. I'll go to my hotel and get the cash and I'll be right back. Oh. And they're like, are you for real, mate? <laughs> He's gone, all, all of a sudden, the ticket's fine. I'm yeah. going to get out of here. Pacemaker's working just fine. I'll go get the cash ASAP. But no, he's been sent to prison. How did they know he was faking? How did the cops just roll in and know straight away? I think it's like, maybe he's just got a reputation around the place. Because right. no, the, the restaurant call, called the cops up and they're like, hey, this guy's here again. Can we, yeah. like, send him off, you how, know? And how many times did you say he's done it? 20? He's done it 20 times. He got tw- he got 19 oh. times successful. This last one, he's busted. They saw him coming. They've known about this bloke. Because, <laughs> like I said, no one has believed this the whole time. It's like waiting for the Michelin star man to come into your restaurant, but it's this bloke. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, watch out for him. He looks like this. He does this. <laughs> Put down the mic. What's in the podcast? What's in the podcast? Dave O, Tom and Callum, the podcast. So we mentioned earlier in the show that we attended Oliver Tree's concert on Friday night. You're my one and only. Yes, this one's getting a bit of a rinse on fresh at the moment. It's an absolute banger. I mean, the guy is just releasing hit after hit. He certainly is, and it was a lot of fun. And we were lucky enough to actually interview him in the lead up. And he's definitely a pretty eccentric guy. Yeah, oh, uh, absolutely. Very I mean, theatrical. One of the more, yeah, fun interviews we've done. But, yeah, insane character. I love that he loved, uh, he laughed at his own jokes a lot. Oh, and that was He was what... pissing it. He was pissing at more of the stuff that he was saying than we were. You it know, was just... super endearing. Yeah, he was having a lot of fun. So, definitely an interview worth checking out. Yeah. yeah. Well, through the interview, I did, I did have to ask him one thing. I know he's obsessed with food, so I had to ask him this. I just wanted to know, do you have, like, a go-to pre-show? snack. Yeah, I, I'm really into these deep fried Oreos. Mix those in with the deep fried hot Cheetos. I have a deep fryer that I get at every one of my shows. They bring me, I'll just get whatever I can get my hands on, really chilies, sometimes like hot dogs, uh, glizzies, and we'll just deep fry everything. So after him telling us that he brings a deep fryer everywhere, it's in his claws, in his contract, uh, I asked him, what, what would a good mid-show snack mm. be to roll to you on the stage? And he said... Don't worry about bringing me a snack. Just get me some more oil for my <laughs> deep fryer. Yeah. He's, uh, he's very efficient. He just uh, he needs he, he knows what the necessities are. Some rock stars have you know gin, vodka. He wants just yep. straight oil for man, his deep fryer. Man wanted oil, and I remembered he was frothing the uh, deep fried Oreos. So I got him a small sleeve of Oreos too. I covered the oil and the Oreos in fresh uh, stickers, mm-hmm. and I was like, right, all I got to do is get front stage. And roll it on to the stage. He'll see it or wave it in his face. Turns out uh, it was very hard 
to get to the front of that stage and people would not let me through at one point. So I was lucky enough to stumble across some free uh, drink cards uh, and that is what I used to bribe my way to the front up until people just wow. started flat out refusing, saying, we're not even drinking. You can't go <laughs> past us. I'm like, come on. I can't believe it. Yeah, and it's a, it's a tough bargain to say, hey, I've got oil and uh, Oreos for Oliver Tree without yeah. any context and expect them to be like, yeah, come on through. Yeah. Right. Oh, you can take my spot. Oh, you're the deep fryer guy. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's been talking about you all night. So we, we obviously knew that the oil we had to take because that was a bit of fun, you know? Yeah. But we're also brainstorming about what else we could bring. And I... I thought it would be really funny to throw some sexy knickers at him, but yep. not just any sexy knickers, the biggest double bed sheet comedy sexy knickers I could find. I lost it. When I when I showed up to the venue, I came a tad later and I saw you, Dave, and I was like, did you, did you bring it? And then without saying anything, you stretched them out and it was, you know, your whole wingspan. It was six foot. Shaking yeah. at the I was, arms. I was going to say, it would have been a uh, stretch out. It probably would have been about as tall as me. Yes. Uh, I remember me and you started stretching it together, Dave, at one point, and then the time had come to get these knickers to Oliver Tree. Of course. So we thought we'd obviously just throw them, but I knew I w- I didn't have the arm for it, so I had to enlist Tom to give this a crack. So I said, mate, scrunch these up and get these to Oliver Tree. So, so yeah, scrunched up, first throw, it was a fail. Absolute fail. Didn't mm. get anywhere near him. Yeah. Second shot, though, Tom, I've never seen anything like it. You bloody hit the bloke. I hit him in the side of the head. (laughs) Had to redeem yourself from the first bad shot because of the wind resistance on how much surface area these knickers have. I I honestly, and what we wanted from this, what we wanted was the knickers to land on stage Mm. And then him to pick them up and unravel and stretch them, them out. And, and see the six foot wingspan that like, these knickers had. What the hell? Who are my groupies these days? <laughs> Literally amazing. But what happened then, Tom? So we couldn't get the oil to him. We got the knickers to him. But what did we do to get the oil to him? Uh, we enlisted the help of a security guard. Someone we knew there, loosely knew this security guard. He managed to get someone down and then we managed to get the oil and the Oreos to Oliver's manager. Yes, which was very <laughs> exciting. But I did get an update on Sunday, Tom. We got oh, an update. You? So our contact at Hindley Street Music Hall sent me a message Sunday morning and saying, why on earth is there a bottle of oil with fresh stickers all over <laughs> all over it in Oliver Tree's green room? <laughs> he didn't take he the didn't oil. didn't even open it. <laughs> I think that's a win still in my book. Yeah, he would have seen it. He would have seen it. He would have taken a look at it and been like, oh, yeah, cool. In my head, I can only hope he saw it, had a chuckle, and left it there. <laughs> <laughs> You're listening to Dave Tom and Callum, the podcast. DJ Fisher, he's made worldwide news because what he's done over the weekend is a worldwide first. And he had a festival happening over in California, Hollywood, and he shut down Hollywood Boulevard Walk of Fame to basically have a giant festival. Mm, yeah, so this is a huge one over in America, and I believe, what is it, Chris Lake is yes. going to be doing it with him, so they're both kind of running the show. Yeah, it happened last night, so yeah. it was a really big event, and basically they shut down this street, it sold out, there was thousands and thousands of people there. Yeah, can I say, pretty good for an Australian like Fisher to uh, be able to do this, and you know, that is getting that sort of, um, you know, American fame as well. Oh, he's, he certainly has, he's so well known through Throughout Europe now as well. He's definitely taken the world by storm. But he was on the Today Show on Friday before the main event, obviously hyping it up and talking to Carl Stefanovic about it. And this is how the chat went. All that drama shutting down. He's a Holland bad man. Boulevard for the gig of a lifetime. He joins us now from Hollywood. He's a bad man. There he is. Yeah. <laughs> hey. Flick it. Guys? Flick it, bro. Now... I don't know, you should see this interview because Carl Stefanovic is trying so hard to be cool with Fisher. You hear him there say he's a bad man twice, flick the wrist. He calls him bro about 17 times. Yeah, he's uh, it's very uh, boomer energy. Is but really that <laughs> just Carl Stefanovic to a T? I feel yeah, like he's it like is. that with every inter- person he interviews who's like, you know, cool. under 40. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like he's trying to be cool with everyone. But then, of course, it is live TV and Fisher, because he is a cheeky bloke, he comes out with this. Can you do that funny sound? You make the... Hi, I don't know. 
<laughs> how did you do that? How did you get? How it's you... on the fly. It's on the fly. Go on, teach Sarah how to do it. Go on. <laughs> Can you show me Carl first, and then I'll go after you? I don't have a very long tongue. <laughs> I feel sorry for your woman, Carl, if you don't have a long tongue, son. <laughs> it's, uh, it's similar uh, content as to what we do. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're on the same. You know, it's, uh, it's crazy, though. Um, I, I think it's so funny that, like you said, you know, Stefan Oak's trying to impress Fisher. You know, Fisher's a young man to Stefan Oak. He's trying to, like, get on good terms with him. And then Fisher turns around and just bats him that one. Like, what an <laughs> awful day at the office. Real side swipe, wasn't you it? Should, yeah. You should see Carl try and bring that back on track. And Fisher just cannot. He and he's just absolutely <laughs> losing it. Too late. Love this podcast? Support it and sponsor today. Simply head to OzcastNetwork.com for details.